Hey, Don here. Okay, so here's the uh, Kenmore microwave that we thought tried to burn the house down. And uh, we thought it was something going out in it, and it caused uh, overdraw in the current, and it started melting. Where do you put Let me grab that stuff. It was melting. The, uh, the plug... Is it burning the plug? Actually, that's the way it was in the wall. It's the old one I replaced it. Actually, no, that was the way it was in the wall. And then that happened a little bit more burning after we bought the new microwave. I moved the uh, uh, six way power strip down to there. But we had to use the power strip because uh, it won't reach. I can't use the kitchen plug still. Now this was what was plugged in there, and I sanded a bunch of the black off of it. And it, you, can see, you might have noticed our house doesn't have a ground; it wasn't built that way. Uh, but all that ground does is just protect you if some wire shorts out on the case when you're touching the case. And you can do with the operation of these things, the devices. So anyway, I sanded that off, and then that's when I used it on the new one and then I had, when we smelt that burning wire smell when we ran the new one the first time so I was like and I'd already planned on replacing the plug which I have done uh, and when I was replacing the plug this is the end of the power strip but I couldn't see that that one was burnt and not just burnt but rusted it had happened a while ago oh probably and it probably had kept on heating up and heating up so that metal had got heated up to the point you know when you heat up steel most kinds of metal really even aluminum if you heat it up it'll oxidize really quickly you know they don't call it rust they call it oxidation but you could call rust oxidation period if you wanted to so that's what supposedly technically you know the real name of it is but uh so i cut that off and i had a brand new in i cut that off and i wanted to check the wires anyway and the wires were fine they hadn't been heated up and damaged and the wires in the wall were okay. I was worried about that. I thought I had bad dreams the night, that night in between that I might have to be pulling, <coughs> trying to get in the attic with the wires, and I'm not really up to that anymore. So, <coughs> I didn't have bad dreams, but I had a hard time going to sleep thinking. So, I've got, <coughs> I haven't turned it on since. Since the day that we found it, it was heating the wall so much. My mom noticed it while I was cooking something. It was heating that plug so much she couldn't hardly touch it. And so anyway, I got a little ceramic thing with water in there so that it won't be bad for it to run it with nothing in it. It's bad for it to run with nothing in it. And I want to try running it. I've got it on a 20 amp cord here that's got a 20 amp circuit here in the garage when I use on my welder. So I'm going to do two minutes and see how it goes. Let's see how you do it. I've already learned the new one. Let's see. First of all, I'm going to see if, see if I can set the power level. You have, you have to do it while it's running, I think. <coughs> That's the big problem we had with it, and I hated it from day one because it wouldn't stay in power level 10. It kept going to power level 8 automatically. And that was in the reviews after Mom went and got this at the store because we were needing one and needed it quick. And, um... Then I read the reviews after it got brought home and found out that people, a lot of people hated this thing. And I hated it, and I thought it had gone out. Well, let's see if it did or not. Let's see if it's acting up. See if I can tell. It, it didn't act up on, it didn't act up at all. I didn't notice anything wrong. It was just that plug heating up. Other than it kept going down to pair level eight. I had just got through, you have to unplug it, plug it back in, or reset the button on the six ways, what I would do. I was on the way. That you could get it once it's stuck in eight to get it back up to ten. Um, yeah, hitting power level before you start does nothing. If you hit one of these numbers, it's just going to start cooking. Okay, I hit it once and it says PL10. That's power level 10. That's right. If I hit it again, it would probably, I think it would cycle through, but I'm going to leave it like that. Sounds normal. So, this 
just let it cook a while and see if it, it's actually not as loud as the new one. The new one sounds so, fun, so different that uh, almost, we're kind of worried that there might be something wrong with it. At first it sounded like a fan was hitting something inside. It doesn't sound that way anymore, really, but it is awfully loud. It, it kind of sounds like the transformer buzz to me, so... And that new one has a... Uh, has a broiler in it. Up, a, bro, a heating element up in the top. And you can use it or not use it. And I just used it for the first time today. And it worked great. It did what it's supposed to. But uh, that's not this one. It's the other one. It's a, a RCA. But it's still very loud. And it's even louder. And it, it makes all kinds of noises. Switches and stuff when you're using that. Of course you would expect that, that heating element to need switches. This one sounds just like it always has. It, actually right now it's not kicking down. It's not kicking out of power level 10, but it didn't. It, usually, when you reset it, get it into power level 10, you usually do fine cooking your food and everything. And then the next time you come back, uh, after it'd been used a few times, uh, it would have set itself back into eight. But now I'm kind of wondering is if it was doing that because maybe there's a sensor in it. It has all kinds of sensors in it that could tell that the current uh, wasn't getting enough current, and it would show, it bring itself. If it set itself down a power level, see if it smells or anything. I don't smell anything. See if it's going down a power level. And that water's hot. I don't even think I want to stick my finger in it. it you can see steam coming off of it. It is 1100 watt. Now, the other one I bought is 1000 watt. I think you can tell a little. It's enough of 100 watts is enough that you can, I believe, tell a little difference in the cooking power. I really wanted 1100 watt, but they all had bad reviews and they had pictures online of them trying to catch it on fire and burn it up and flames come out, you know, where flames would come out of the back and the inside and the back both. This is, the only thing I can grab there is the handle. So that was exactly enough to heat that, that thing. It's about, about a little over half full of water. I can't do any more without uh, putting something else in there. So and that's what I want to do is run it a good long time. I think I'll get, I'm going to get a bigger thing that'll take a lot longer to heat up. I'm just going to let that stand in and cool. It's cool outside today and it's in the 40s I believe and I'm in the garage. You had not noticed that already if I didn't say that already. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stop the video now. There's no point in it sitting here running for nothing. But uh, probably couldn't see my head at all with me standing over there. But that's okay. Uh, I'll come back and do another test. All right. Bye.